Hey guys, Anthony 4B4 Diesel. Thought we'd give you a bit of information on the 1KZ diesel, the 1KZ TE 3 litre. It's a, you know, 3 litre turbocharged engine with an intercooler. <clears throat> it's all work, but the, in the intercooler is fairly straightforward to remove. That's already been done. We've spent about an hour on this vehicle so far getting the intercooler off and a few other bits and pieces. As you can see, the throttle body. We just wanted to show you. You know what could be sort of typical i'll get in a bit closer and i'll let you know if i think it's better or worse than what they normally are as far as the ejr and the intake system goes on these there's a lot of people get their information mixed up you know reading on facebook groups oh you know about this job and that job and you know i need to clean my ejr and i need to change my injectors now i just want to make the information really clear i have been clear the clearest way to be clear is if you go and watch my channel, watch my information, don't listen to other ones because it just gets mixed up and confusing, right? So if you watch all the information, it'll all sort of come together. As I said, it's like a million piece jigsaw puzzle and all the pieces are coming together. So the important things on these engines that will kill the engine if you're unlucky and it happens to you and you're not lucky and it doesn't go out clean, that is the glow plugs. The glow plug tips do fall off for those that don't know what the glow plugs is, or are, is or are, whatever, they those suckers right there, right? We're not going to talk about why they're there and what they do in this video, but there's four of them. And they screw into the head right there. Now, the tips, once they get old, do fall off. And you might be lucky and they'll go out the valve and through the turbo clean without any issues. Sometimes it's not the case. It has cost people engines. So therefore, we've been recommending for a long time to change those glow plugs every 100,000 Ks. Doesn't matter what the 1KZ engine is in, and every engine is different. So because this 1KZ wants the glow plugs changed every 100,000, it doesn't mean you touch them on the 1KD. We didn't say that. That's different. You need to watch all the videos. I'll just quickly say that the 1KDs, there's more problems with them getting stuck trying to get them out and causing your own problems and resulting in having to pull the head off. We don't see them tips fall off and do damage so we say don't touch them on the 1kd do not touch the glow plugs so back to the 1kz here it is the injectors aren't inside the engine and through the valve cover like the 1kd so it is a bit of a smaller job fairly straightforward i'm not saying you should do it yourself but let's just have a look in this manifold here uh, probably a little bit more built up than what some of them are, but the worst of it, you can see the EJR valves on the back, so it's throwing the exhaust gases in from the back. There's the port right there, you can't see too well. Um, and the worst of it's going to be around the throttle body and what you see here, so not normally worth cleaning the manifold. I would say even on this one, I haven't got my head or camera right in there yet, but probably not really worth pulling the manifold off in my opinion, but if you want to be anally fussy, it's not that hard, not that much more work to go and pull the manifold off. It is work though, and all the time does add up and the time cleaning, so it would add at least another couple hundred dollars or so to the job in labour and cleaning time, probably, you know, two or three hundred bucks, I'd imagine. Now, to change these injectors, so what we've done so far, we've got the intercooler off, just trying to make the video shorter. Some people want full length videos. If you want the really long ones and the detailed videos, they're in the VIP group. This one, it might be in the VIP group for now. It might be, yeah, we'll just see what happens. It all depends how it turns out. So the intercooler's off, the throttle body's off. You can see the sort of components we've removed. If you want more detail on that, that's the sort of thing that is or will be in the VIP group. Um, so what we're doing now is removing the fuel lines. You can see, pretty straightforward. Now with the 1KD, when you replace the injector, you must replace the fuel pipe. With these, you can reuse the fuel pipes. Do not bend the nuts out of them, just very carefully. You know, you can carefully rework them back out of the way. Okay, so bada bing. So we're gonna um, have a look a bit closely in that manifold, work out whether it needs a good clean out or not, and get on with getting these injectors and glow plugs out. We'll probably try and add a little bit more information for you, but the main thing I wanted to make clear is change these glow plugs every 100,000 Ks, please. Injectors, it's kind of a matter of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But then people that change these injectors at two or 300,000 Ks report an improvement in responsiveness, economy, cleaner, blowing less smoke. So old school was service these injectors every 100,000 Ks. Um, I sort of don't trust anyone with servicing injectors, so for the small amount cost more, 
I recommend using only brand new, that's what we supply, we don't keep them in stock, it takes time to get them because nobody else does that, they rebuild them. As I said, we're not 100% trusting people to do that and when you consider the amount of time they've been in there, this in this case here, over 10 years, never been changed, if you want to be able to get that again, no questions asked, then you put the same thing in there again and that is a brand new genuine product. Alright guys, a bit more information for you soon. Right, so we've got the camera down in the manifold. I'm just having a look at the device here. So have a look around at those ports. Like I said, it's not a blockage, it's just, you know, you've got a light build up on the surface. So if you want to be anal about it, make it all shiny, then absolutely you can take it off and clean it. But it's going to make little, if any, performance difference whatsoever. Makes a lot of mess on your camera though. If I did that, I'd certainly uh, clean all this area here out first so that you don't make that mess. So how about we do that, mate? Right, what are you doing there, down underneath there? Just removing a bracket that sits underneath the EGR so that we can remove the EGR. Okay, anything you had to get out of the way to get to that? Looks like you've got the wiring loom unclipped down there to make a bit more room, yeah? That's right, and we tucked it all underneath here so it's out of the way. Beautiful. Oil filter comes out. Yeah. And please guys, when you put on the oil filter, <laughs> do not tighten it up with a tool. Hand tight is sufficient. It it's seals on the o hand, yeah? And don't do this here. This is the oil filter that came out. Oh no, so it has to be replaced as well, yeah? It's all dented. Oh yeah, yeah, so tight. I yeah. can see, yeah. So the only thing is going to mm. change this oil soon after we get, get the car back to him. So, Mm. All right, let's get this EGR valve and manifold off. Eh? Okay, this bolt is super tight. Let's see if this works. Whoa, sounding good. Skillful. Just got to feel. Don't over, over push it. Try some different tools. See what works for you. That is super tight and kind of like. You'd call that was all what well, was seized until it became unseized, if you know what I mean, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Just double leverage with extra spanners. Yeah. Beautiful. Look at that. Well done. Well, guys, one part of this job, um, changing the guide plugs and the injectors, is to remove this bracket at the back here that mounts the intercooler. Um, it's loose now. You can see there's two 10 mil bolts down the back of the head, which is a bit difficult to get to. Sometimes they can be seized. Sometimes they will snap off, sometimes they'll be rounded. They'll come out 90% of the time. So you've got to consider whether you think you're in the 90% where if you get a quality tool on the right angle with the right leverage at the right time, they come out no problem. That is the proper way to do the job. But if you are concerned that, look, we, we did a lot of them. So, you know, when bolts break off because they're seized um, and look, you can't get in there without pulling the head off. So when that happens with one, then you've got to assume it may happen with the other. And in consideration of the customer's wallet, what I do is then push that bracket there and just bend it backwards out of the way to get to number four glow plug. It might sound a little bit dodgy, but that's what you've got to do sometimes. If you break both the bolts, you need that bracket there. That means the head's coming off to get those bolts out. There's no other way to do it. So something to think about. And while you're thinking about that, think about how important it is to watch these videos and get this information if you haven't already. Maybe now's a good time to give us a thumbs up, subscribe and turn that bell on. I'll have some more information for you while we're getting through this job here. Right, so we're uh, about to get these glow plugs out. Now on the 1KZs, in my experience, they haven't proved to be as much of a problem as some other engines. But it's advisable to spray something. In this case, it's the uh, WD-40. Anything that might get in there and penetrate to add a bit of lubrication to um, try and help avoid any issues. So we'll get the little uh, tool and see if these come out. Now, we have seen these, I don't know if I've said this in a video before, but we have seen these where people have changed them and had them out and not put them back in, not seating them correctly, and then they can leak slightly. Turning or not? Not yet. Take a rest, take a breath. Hang on. 
Let's. Well, I think what we need is a can of V. Back in a sec. So uh, we didn't have a can of V available, but the Red Bull gives you wings. We've upgraded to 3.8 drive, something a little bit more heavy duty. Ooh. Feeling a bit normal. What I find sometimes, depending what it feels like, sometimes you've got to undo it and then you've got to even do it up again or some more spray. Some more spray sometimes just to get it. And it's probably still sitting there anyway, but get the penetration down there. I'm a fan of Inox. No, Inox isn't a sponsor or anything like that. Or, you know, maybe they need to be. So anyone from Inox will know someone who shoot me the number for the Inox guy and we'll get some Inox. We'll test and review the product. We'll compare it to WD-40 and CRC. I think CRC is probably my, I like the CRC product. That's it, just work it a bit the extra way. This is the problem when people don't change things regularly, right? Sometimes they're gonna cause their own problems. When you hear the eh, 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 eh. it's a little bit better. It helps if you clean your engine down as yeah, well. Yeah, you don't want any more grit falling down there than you need to. Than, this, than you know. this was cleaned yesterday. So it's nice Set up on nice. Mm. Anyway, guys, we're going to continue with this. If there's any further excitement, I'll uh, give you a bit more info. Otherwise, it could be a really long video. Okay, while well, that's happening, just showing your throttle body nice and clean, bada bing. Right, so this one's taken a little bit of work, but it's coming out clean, which is the good news. Now, very gently, and I gently grab that by hand. The key thing here is, guys, the tip could have already fallen off long ago, or just recently, or it could be about to fall off. So. We've got to do our best to gently get it out. Super jubilantly, just lift it out, beautiful. Without ta oh, look at that, it's still there. Oh, oh, oh. Now let's take that right, to the so bench. So we're about to put this on the bench and see how close it is for the tip falling off to show you what happens. All right, put it down. Give it a little bit more of a tap each time and let's just see if it comes off. I reckon that is so close. Uh, maybe not, drop it from a bit higher, okay. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a tap, gentle tap on the end of the tip. Yeah, might be nice. This is a special. Okay, this one's all right. All right, let's get heavy with a tab each time. And let's see, you know. So this is one that the tip obviously wasn't about to fall off. Ah, that's a good one. What brand is this? That'll be the original, right? What is the original brand? They look very much like the HKTs, ND, is it? Mmm, looks like an ND. Yeah. Can you zoom in on that? Is that what it's, I can't see from here anyway, I'm just doing the camera, mate. Um, mm. I can't remember what the original brand is. They look a lot like the HKTs, that's what we mm. use. So yeah. Give it a good tap, give it the tip a good tap. Let's, um... Jeez, that's a good one, that is. Oh. Right, let's just have a look at it. When, no need to break that one off, it doesn't want to break off. Let's get the uh, the other three out and have a look at those. Right. Pretty much the same thing over here again, working it slowly on number two. If it feels easier than the last one. Yeah, sometimes, you know, they make a bit of creaking noise and you can just sort of keep going. You just got to suck it and see. It's always good to have a bit of patience, take your time. It's just important to know when you should stop and go back the other way because you can cause problems by going too far either way at the wrong time. And sometimes you can try and do everything right. This one's better than the other one, you reckon? Same, same. Same, yeah. Fun and games, isn't it? Just get the radio going, man. Who's got a really big radio? You got a three quartered half, bloody massive big radio? Oh. Yeah, I think that's coming out now. That's good. Mm. 
getting lighter and lighter. All right, we'll show you when we're lifting it out or back on the bench. All right, number two, just gently coming at that last little bit. Is the tip there or missing? Another one there, beautiful. Ooh, another good one. These are good glow plugs, mate. These ones, have a look at them. They don't look too healthy, but um, there you go. All right, let's get number three out. All right, pretty much the same. Do you reckon this was a little bit easier than the other two? A little bit. About the same, but a little bit easier. So it's coming out. Hopefully we've got some excitement and um, there's a tip missing on one of them. Well, hopefully not. Now, hopefully all the tips are there and they're like the first two, but I'm sort of hoping two ways for the customer. Oh, we'd obviously like all the tips to still be there to know there's never been any damage done. As I said, they can go out clean, they can cause failure quickly, or they can just be embedded into the piston for a long time and um, do damage sort of later over time. So it's really good news for the client if uh, these come out clean. Number three. Number four. Go to the bench and slam it. All right, slam it. Oh, look, you know, these glow plugs are damn bulletproof. These are. Oh, look at those. They are beautiful. Look, guys, normally this doesn't happen. It is really important to take your car to an expert if you're not sort of an expert in case this does go pear-shaped with these, these kinds of jobs. So if you're all over it and this helps you get the job done, that's good, but... If you don't want to end up with a headache and in a bit of trouble, always remember, you can uh, ask on one of our Facebook groups, who do you recommend in what particular area to get jobs like this done? And we haven't got all areas covered, but we're doing our best. And I'll just take a second to mention, if you're at a workshop and you know what you're doing and you're looking for a bit more work, feel free to contact me, shoot me a text message, just let me know, we'll have a chat and maybe we can send some work your way depending on the outcome of that. Bada bing. Sounds like number four is coming out. Let's go check it out. So one, two, three, four. So hardest, not so hard, a little bit easier and easiest. Very good uh, on the tools there, keeping it gentle, not knocking it around. What's happening over this side, mate? Trying to get these bolts out still. These old Ooh. cars, mate, they're time consuming to work on. It's going to get costly if these bolts don't come out. Fingers crossed. Oh, got it. Got it. That was tight, man. You nearly went flying like, that was a goal just about, down the other end of the ground. Oh, Lucky you had your Wheaties this morning, eh? Down there, huh? Yeah, fun and games, mate. That's what you pay for, guys. Things aren't that easy. I wouldn't like to be, uh, a DIY doing this my first time, that's for sure. Oh, there's one with a tip missing. That's what we're talking about. And you can see it's been missing for a little while. Can't focus on it too well here. We'll get over the bench and have a look right, at it. So, here they are. One, two, three, four. You can see number four, the tip's been missing for a while. Could have gone out the engine clean. Could be, you know, embedded in the head of the piston, in the crown, you know. Maybe, maybe probably not. Could have banged around in there and done some damage before it left, who knows. Chances are it's been like that a long time. 
and it'll probably be okay. But you want to get these out before it does this. Yes, it's probably too late, but I have been telling you for years. Sorry, I don't know how to get a further reach to get to everybody that's got one of these vehicles, but the advice is change them every 100,000 Ks. If you haven't, get them out now because what's the chances one in four? This vehicle has got a 75% chance because the other three have been removed and getting replaced. Bada bing. Glow plugs are going back in. Oh, what do you got on the thread there, mate? You got something on the thread, ah? Oh. Entities. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So from factory they put them in dry. That's probably not bad when you've got brand new materials, but once you've got something a bit older, you put them in dry, you might not get them out next time. So I think that's a very good idea. And you can use different types of anti-seize or grease or whatever you prefer. I'm not gonna say I'm the expert on what product to use there because I've had bad experience with nickel anti-seize. Oh, I think grease is pretty good, a good old basic product, but it depends which one you use. Okay, one more to go. Did you fast forward? Oh, you missed it! Ah, oh, no, just joking guys. Um, we've talked the uh, glow plugs off to 13 Newton meters. You don't need to see how that's done. If you want to see how to use a torque wrench, you can check out some of my other videos. Bada bing, 13 Newton meters on those. The engine's all sealed up again. And they can sit there. Let's get these injectors out. All right, so we're going to change these injectors out. Getting the uh, fuel line off the top of the injectors. It's a 14 mil. Then the return line is above that. That's what that next nut down is. Anyway, you guys can figure it out. If you're going to do this. Um, and then we're going to get the injectors out. I'll give you a bit more info soon. All right, guys, so the inlet manifold is off. You can see the injectors are still in place to keep the engine sealed, more or less. Just want to show you on the 1KZ what the ports are like. So on the 1KD, it's a different story. They are worse. They're not always worth cleaning there either, but I'd say this generally isn't worth the extra work. You can see they might be black. They've got a powdery coating on them, but it's not like it's caked up or anything blocking the flow or anything like that. The engine's going to pull the air it needs from there. So two ways to look at it. Is it worth doing? Um, maybe it's not worth doing. But while you're in there doing the once in every, well, this is 15 years. I'd suggest maybe doing it in 10 years or less. But when you're in there doing the birthday, maybe it's uh, worth giving it all a nice clean up, right? So up to you just showing you this is the actual facts of what's in there when you pull it apart and have a look let's go and have a look at the uh, manifold and see what that looks like compared to here okay so manifold let's have a look in the ports let's look in here remember the muck in here let's have a better look around here mm, bit of stuff you can kind of scrape out from here messy icky ooky yucky stuff right and that's where it all goes in there that's the EGR valves normally out here goes in that hole there right so it looks pretty messy there a bit like the 1kd where you can't often get away with that pulling the manifold off um, that's I'm not talking about that too much of this that's in other videos but by the time you get down to the ports you know there's a bit of powdery stuff there but that is not going to affect anything in the performance whatsoever these 1kz's are a much earlier euro standard you know emission standard they don't need to meet as strict emissions as the later vehicles. Right, I'm trying to just get, show you what's going on. So, understand this is what they look like. It's your decision whether you want to clean it out or not. I'm not gonna say it's not worth cleaning. It's kind of, it all depends how much money you've got, right? Kind of not worth cleaning, but it's not a lot of money to do it every 10 years, if you look at it that way. So it's kind of like you may as well. This one's getting done. If you haven't got the money, you don't have to do it. You're just going to leave this in there. No big deal. Butter bing. No butter bing was there. Yeah, this is butter boom. Over here again, lifting the fuel return rail off the injectors. Um, it is obviously easier to do while the manifolds are not there. So there's a positive for the job if you do the whole thing together. All right, beautiful. And ready to get the injector nozzle, the nozzles out. All right 
like getting that last injector out. There you go. Look at that, eh? Pretty standard looking stuff. I think you might need a new glove there, mate. It's a bit ripped open. What's going on there? Oh, okay, let's clean it all up a bit. Looking good. It's beautiful. The uh, new glow plugs are in and torqued up. That happened before. The new injectors are sitting in place. And they are around about to get nipped up to 54 Newton meters. And that'll be a butter bing. Oh, this is looking nice. Yeah, a nice clean manifold, nice clean ports, nice clean new injectors, nice return line. So the fuel return line's been fitted back onto the injectors. That's 30 Newton meters, if I remember correctly. And that manifold goes on nicely, then the nuts will go on. And it all goes back together, guys. So I'm gonna leave it pretty well at that, I think, because this video is going to get too long for you. You'll get people complaining. Been someone complaining lately. I've got to say, three strikes and you're out. That's quite funny. I was having a look at some of the comments, and one guy goes, "Oh, I don't know. Look, I can't be. I can't even be all that remembering." And he, oh, he's complaining about how long it went and whatever. And then he complained again on another one. And then he complained again on, on the first one. I said, "Mate." soon you'll be out you won't have to worry about it and then the next, then he's complaining again i said oh mate that's two strikes three strikes and you're out and then i saw him complaining again on a third one so i put comments there saying mate and he's probably thinking i don't care you know block me anyway whatever i haven't got time for you complaining if you don't like it leave All right, so I just wanted to let you know the torque settings on the injectors is 54 newton meters, on the return lines 30 newton meters, and the fuel return, no, the fuel line, sorry, is 15 newton meters. So getting this manifold and throttle body back on, that's it in this video, guys. Bada bing, bada boom. If you got something out of that, give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And another day when we've got some more time, maybe we'll have a complete. 1KZ injector replacement video, but hopefully there's been some info in there to help you out. Thanks for watching. See ya.